Before the video gets going, I just want to make a small announcement. A while ago, I made a video entitled Songs That Have Disturbed Me, Frankie Teardrop, in which I go over the song Frankie Teardrop and why I find it so disturbing. You can check that video out at the end of this one. A link for it will be in the description below. In that video, I said the following. I'm thinking of making this into a series since there are a few songs that I consider to be as disturbing as Frankie Teardrop, if not more. So if this reaches like 50 likes, that's what I'll do. The video didn't do all that well, but since it got well over 50 likes and I'm a man of my word, I decided to do a follow-up video. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one after this. It depends on how well this video is received. And I want to be a bit more ambitious, so I'll say if this video gets 250 likes, then I'll do another one and prolong this series. Now with all that out of the way, let's start the video. How much pain is too much pain for a person to endure? And what characterizes a life that is worth living? This pain may be psychological, due to a major loss or severe mental illness, or physical. Obviously, that question would get different answers depending on who you ask. Some person's nightmare may be a different person's reality. As a matter of fact, it is highly likely that our worst fears are indeed part of several people's realities. War, famine, genocide, disease, and extreme poverty are all happening in this world right now to an incredibly high number of people. But still, there are many ways a person's life can be turned around. If that weren't the case, we wouldn't get several thousands of people trying to illegally migrate from one country to another in search of a better life to escape several of the factors that I mentioned previously. You wouldn't have parents carrying on after the loss of a child, which is the worst nightmare of any parent, and probably the worst psychological pain anyone can ever go through. In the mix of extreme pain, there is always hope, and people carry on living and enduring harsh realities, hoping for a day in the future where they can somewhat be happy. But what happens in the few extreme cases where there is no chance to live a somewhat normal life? Nothing besides pain, every day, every hour, every minute. What happens when all hope is gone, and something worse than your worst fear has become your new reality? Well, that is the story told by the song that I'm going to talk about today. That song being Hamburger Lady, by the seminal industrial group Throbbing Gristle. Welcome to episode 2 of Songs That Have Disturbed Me. Before we analyze this song's vertical content, I just wanted to briefly state here that this is not an ordinary song. There is no verse, no chorus, no hook. There is no singer per se, only a somewhat devilish sounding narrator. And if you're not familiar with the type of output Throbbing Gristle and any other industrial or even noise groups make, then this is a song that will leave you confused on multiple levels. With that said, let's tell the story of the Hamburger Lady. A woman is severely hurt in an accident. We are not told exactly what type of accident it is. We are simply on the receiving end of a description of the woman's physical state. And it is horrendous. We are first told that she is the worst patient to take care of by far. Not because of any behavioral issue or sorts. It's nothing like that. It's just that there are a lot of technicians that are mentally incapable of working with her. We are told that her health will never improve 
and that she'll spend the rest of her life in care. As we are getting these initial descriptions, the disorientating drone sound starts to be played, and it will never subside until the end of the song, with volume shifts occurring occasionally. A horn is also played from time to time, in a way that accentuates this sickening feeling. That feeling is only worsened as we figure out why she has the nickname of Hamburger Lady. Her body is completely burned from the waist up. There are no ears, there is no nose, no eyelashes, no fingers, nothing is recognizable. Her muscles and tendons are basically burnt off, hence why she can't hold anything. But then you ask, how is it possible that someone in that state can survive? Well, that's where the detail that she's only burned from the waist up takes a new level of importance. In spite of a great portion of the digestive tract being ruined, her lower gastrointestinal tract is working, which means she can absorb nutrients. She cannot eat, so these nutrients are supplied to her by tubes connected to her arms and legs. And so she's alive, and as the song notes, she has no end in sight. As long as the nurses, from who she is completely dependent, keep changing her tubes. The final portion of the song is reserved to discuss how this affected one of the technicians. He seemed to do all right until he came into contact with one of the nurses, eating chili mac on the outside of the hamburger lady's room and subsequently puked all over the floor. This is the story of the Hamburger Lady, a woman forever condemned to extreme levels of pain with no relief, forever dependent until the end of her days. The Hamburger Lady's lyrics were not written by Throbbing Gristle. They were taken from a letter written by Blaster Al Ackerman, a male artist prominent in the 70s. I had no idea what male artistry was, so I went and researched. Turns out it was a movement from around that time that focused on mailing stories through postal services. Here is what the letter said. By far, the worst is the hamburger lady. And because of the shortage right now of qualified technicians, for example, technicians who can work with her and keep their last meal down, Screwless Warritson and I have been alternating nights with her, unrelievedly. If you put a 250 pounds meatloaf in the oven and then burned it and then followed that by propping it up on a potty chair to greet you at 11 p.m. each night, you would have some description of these past two weeks. Which is to say, the worst I've seen since Viet Napalms. When somebody tells you that there is a level of pain beyond which the human mind cannot retain consciousness, please tell them to write me. In point of fact, this lady has not slept more than three to five minutes at a stretch since she came to us. That was over two weeks ago, and thanks to medical advances, there is no end in sight. From the waist up, everything is burned off. Ears, nose, etc. Lower half is untouched, and that, I guess, is what keeps her alive. I took one guy in to help me change tubes, and he did all right. That is all right till he came out. Then he spotted one of the bird nurses, pleasant smiling zombies, eating a can of chili mac at the desk. And that did it. He flashed on the carpet. It is fucking insane, is what it is. Since this letter is a piece of art, it probably means that it's fictional. Although Ackerman did work in a burnt unit in Vietnam, as it is stated in this 2009 article in Arthur Mag. A link for it will be in the description below. 
Although I find this song incredibly unnerving, for me the horror comes from a simple fact. This could happen to anyone at any time. Many of us are simply one freak accident away from meeting our demise. We are not invincible. And this story takes that fear and brings it to a whole new level. Because if I had to choose between death and spending the rest of my life as a vegetable in the midst of constant unforgiving pain, so great that it prevents me from sleeping more than a few minutes at a time, I know what I would choose. There are very few things worse than death, but this, to me, is one of them. Thank you for watching. I'd also like to thank the user DAC Crowell, who reminded me of the song's existence back in the Frankie Teardrop video's comments. I had completely wiped off this song from my memory, so it was nice of him to remember me that the song exists. My name is Joe Fiki Fiki, and I'll see you later on with another video. Bye-bye.